Hello, I'm Kerry Siders with the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. Today we'd like to visit about management of cotton flea hoppers. Now cotton flea hoppers are a small plant bug, approximately eighth inch in length, a light pale green color. The immatures are much lighter in color. They sometimes have uh, red eyes and even red appendages. Uh, now the, back to the adults, they will ha be somewhat hairy and, and those uh, hairs can even be create like black spots. Now plant bugs, there's many of these, we don't want to confuse them with ligus and some of the other uh, insects that uh, visit cotton fields. Cotton flea hoppers uh, are very flighty, they move very quickly, especially when you cast a shadow on the plant or if there's any kind of movement. So as you're walking through the field, really need to pay attention to the things that are moving in front of you. Uh, flea hoppers will uh, kind of scurry as you, as you walk through. Now on a very large field, uh, you may want to take more samples, but typically on our West Texas High Plains cotton fields, uh, we'll divide the field up into four quadrants. And in each of those quadrants, we're going to check 25 terminals. And as we approach a cotton plant, we want to start this um, when the cotton plant has at least four or five true leaves. And we're going to carry this on until we begin to square so that we recognize when it begins to square and then really intensify our scouting during the first three weeks of squaring. Those, those squares that are formed early in the season create the money bowls. Those are first position bowls and are extremely valuable. So we want to protect them, keep them from being uh, lost, uh, particularly from the flea hopper, or ligus, any other insects for that matter. And they could even be lost from some environmental impact. But we want to separate those losses out and if, if we see uh, losses from flea hoppers, we're going to take corrective action. As we approach this field, one of the other things you want to make note of are weeds, particularly silverleaf nightshade, uh, also known as whiteweed. Those are really good alternative hosts. In fact, flea hoppers prefer whiteweed over cotton. So you want to be careful too about how you manage those weeds. Try to control those weeds prior to squaring, uh, whether it's through chemically controlled or cultivation, try to get those weeds cleaned up so that those uh, flea hoppers don't present a problem, uh, you know, and develop on the white weeds and then move in mass to the cotton. Do not try to control those weeds during that squaring period because what happens is then it does force the flea hoppers off the, the weed, the white weed or any other weed for that matter, onto uh, the cotton and, and will damage the square. So then you may want to wait and uh, hold that weed control until after bloom. So as, I, as we approach a cotton plant to check it for flea hoppers, again, don't cast your shadow. Um, and as you move through the field, you, you may see flea hoppers moving around. And that's a good indication that they are there. Uh, try to, as you approach a plant, put your hand, kind of cup it, to prevent them from running down and quickly look at the terminal looking for flea hoppers in that terminal and oftentimes once I take a quick glance then I'll pull it up and do just a quick once over. Our thresholds are not set for a whole plan inspection. However, as you, if you see a lot of movement in the field and you know that the flea hoppers are not being just held right there in that terminal, you may want to go ahead and take a quick look at the whole plant, but really concentrate on that top third of the plant. Remembering that most of our modern varieties typically don't begin to square till the seventh or eighth node, but if there are, you know, as we have some conventional varieties, uh, some other varieties uh, in the mix today, we, we may want to really uh, begin scouting though, even at the fourth and fifth true leaf because there could be some squares uh, that low into the plant. And so once you've looked for the flea hopper itself, then take a quick look at the squares when they're present and see if they're damaged or healthy and make a count. I always carry 
a, a notepad to keep track of those numbers. And again, we're going to look at 25 plants per quadrant, a total of 100. So as we look at the squares, make note of, you know, flared bracts, if they're opened up, uh, there's damage that has occurred there, most likely those will uh, fall off or blasted squares. Those would be uh, squares that were damaged. They, they were retained by the plant. They didn't fall off, but they're dead. And, and it's always a telltale sign if you um, know that you're squaring, let's say, typically at the sixth or seventh node, and you're seeing on a few plants uh, missing or blasted squares, and then you've got larger squares above it. And so you know that there should have been a square or you, or you can find them as a blasted square. Keep track of that. We don't want to see the first week our square set drop below 90%. If we start losing 10% of those squares, we're dipping into that uh, yield potential of that plant and, and particularly those money bowls that are formed down at the heart, the bottom of the plant. Now the second week as we move into uh, second week of squaring, then we're looking at trying to maintain at least an 85% square set. Then as we go to the third week, we don't want that to drop below 75%. So that accounts for the first three weeks of squaring. Normally as we go into about the, the 30th day, somewhere between 25 and 30 days, we begin to bloom and flea hoppers become less critical in terms of uh, square set. Now, realizing that the plant typically, uh, its, it's holding capacity for squaring is usually in the low 60s, but we want to maintain a high square set uh, during those first three weeks. And we also want to combine that then with the flea hopper numbers. And if we find 25 to 30 flea hoppers in those 100 plants that we inspect, then we're going to treat. Now, we want to scout on a, on a regular weekly basis, every seven days. However, if we start detecting, you know, flea hoppers, square loss, we want to intensify that, uh, that, that scouting to maybe every three to four days.